Hey chess lovers, welcome back to the chess yard. This is Dehre Bagga and today I'll be showing you one of the interesting chess games that I played some time back. Now I was playing here as black, my open started off with e4. I respond with c6, trying to play the Karukan defense, opponent plays d4, I go for d5. And here my opponent plays knight to c3, which is the main line in the Karukan defense. Had the opponent tried to take on the pawn, it becomes the exchange variation. Had the opponent advanced the pawn onto e5, that becomes the advanced variation. So this is the main line in the Karakan and the best move here is to take on the pawn. That's what I do here. Opponent does take back and I develop the bishop with tempo, bishop to f5. It's always nice when you're developing the pieces, uh, attacking the other piece as well. Uh, opponent goes back to g3 with the knight, had to save the knight and now I have to save the bishop. So bishop comes to g6. Now the open develops the other knight on to f3 and here I play e6. Uh, generally you can consider two options here. Uh, playing e6 is one of them and the other one is knight uh, b to d7 so that you are controlling the square which is e5. Generally the open would like to trade off the bishop for the knight because the bishop can be painful here attacking the c2. Uh, here my open plays h4 trying to trap my bishop because I my bishop doesn't have a retrieval square here. So if I go on any of these squares, my bishop is trapped. There is no backward square as well. So if h5 comes, my bishop is gone. So instead, so I just went with h5 myself, preventing such a move, which gives advantage uh, to white. I should have gone for h6 instead, so that after h6, I can get my bishop back to h7. That prevents opponent from playing knight to g5 as well or bishop. So controlling the g5 square is important. I didn't play it the, the right way. I, I went with h5, that's a mistake from my end, but then open played a knight to e5. And here I thought, uh, let me not ruin my pawn structure and, and don't let me not give the free pawn as well. Uh, the pawn can be captured with the knight if I remove the bishop from here, because then open will have queen and the knight supporting the attacking the h5 square. So I thought, let me defend this bishop only. So I went with a knight to e7 defending the bishop and here my opponent does trade which is not a good idea because after I take uh, I have got rid of the knight which was closing in on my king side. So that's a release in, of some pressure towards my side of the board and here opponent thought that it's a free pawn and takes on h5. That's that's actually bad because it's not a free pawn uh, and computer is telling you right now why is it not because after queen gives a check from a5 the knight is gonna go uh, because I have two attackers now the rook and the queen both attacking the h5 square so and only queen is defending it so uh, it's a lost piece there open tries to defend and attack my queen and I take with the queen Opponent can trade off queens, but the opponent is down a piece, so uh, not really a good idea. So opponent thought of placing bishop to e2, trying to hang hang in there. I went with queen d5, again the best move. Now what queen d5 does is attack another pawn as well, uh, actually a couple of them. Uh, d4 and g2 both are hanging right now. Opponent plays bishop to e3, defending the d4 pawn, and I took uh, the h4 instead uh, than taking the g2 because I've, I wanted to exchange the rooks here and make sure that uh, I'm pretty good attacking from here. Uh, so that was the whole agenda here. And after that, open does take, I take back with my knight and then open plays bishop to f3, trying to attack my queen. Here I took on the pawn. I can take the bishop as well. That would be completely fine too. But what happens with uh, this is open uh, says a pawn actually nothing more than that after the straight open has got that extra pawn. But instead in the game when I take on the pawn first it's a check. So open has to move the king as well loses the casting right or can take with the bishop. Open does take with the bishop and I take back with the queen and now I've got extra pawn. So despite being ahead in the game always go for extra pawns whether you it's possible for you. And then open tries to move king to d2, trying to connect queen and the rook. Uh, and then I went with knight d7. Opponent, of course, doesn't want to exchange queens because the opponent is down. You want to keep your remaining pieces on the board to give some fight, hoping for a mistake or a blunder from the opponent. That's what my opponent tries to do. Gets to gets queen to h5. Uh, and I attack the queen straight away with the knight from f6. The idea is now I'm hitting the queen 
I'm preparing to give a check from e4 as well. And that would be nasty. Open puts the queen now onto a5, swinging over the queen, preventing me from castling because my next move would have been to castle and get my rook centralized. So I went with knight instead. Knight gives a check to the king. A king moves up. And here I took another pawn and then traded off knight and the bishop. So I'm pretty good. I have lots of pawn majority apart from just having the extra bishop too. Here my opponent places a rook to e1. Uh, I give a check, open defense with the rook, and now I just try to maneuver my queen from the harm's way. Uh, and it's a, on the good diagonal as well. Queen is controlling most of the squares. I don't need to bother about anything. Next plans include uh, getting your bishop out and then lining up the rook as well. Opponent here offered me queen exchange. Uh, generally, if you're attacking, you should not. But since you're winning it very comfortably, you can. So that's what I did. I exchanged the queens because that gives me a lot of advantage. Uh, I have a piece up. I have extra pawn. Why not trade off and make the game simpler? And after opponent takes back, here comes castling with check. Always a nice move. Feels very good. So castling, putting your king to the safety and attacking the opponent king simultaneously. Uh, since the king was in the center, now king moves. And here comes the bishop. Finally developing on the 26th move attacking the rook opponent tries to attack the pawn there which i saved from rook d7 opponent tries to advance pawns from the queen side now c3 comes up i play uh, g6 opponent plays b4 i get my bishop backwards opponent tries to get around from the other side of the board i just come down preventing any threats and then a rook to f8 defending the base of the pawn chain always very critical the pawn chains only fall from the base that's what you have to be keep looking for. I am defending the base of the pawn chain so nothing goes wrong from here. Open tries to get the king up. Uh, I go for uh, bishop to c7 attacking the pawn. Open tries to defend. I went with king d7. c4 and I play a6. Open closes the pawn chain from there. Doesn't have much options and then pushes for a4. I place rook g8. Open goes up. And I start pushing my pawn forward. Uh, and then I just want him to exchange rooks as well. I'm very happy. Doesn't happen. And then I start maneuvering my king from the other side of the board. Uh, and then pushing the pawn again. Pressurizing him. Forcing the opponent to take the rook. That was happens eventually. And we trade out the rooks. I take on the pawn. And then just... It's a matter of time where I clean up all the pawns. And we are pretty good from here. I took on the pawn. And then pushing my pawn eventually to have a checkmate later on so yeah i thought i i can get another queen as well so i i got another queen here uh, and then yeah checkmate from uh, the last rank would have been then the next move where my opponent designs this was against a stronger rated opponent uh, and i like this game I, it was uh, kind of nice to play against a stronger rated opponent and it was pretty much in control if you see uh, i just take up the analysis as well uh, from the computer perspective might show some inaccuracies and mistakes but overall the game was pretty much in control as you saw so there was nothing which was going wrong there just try to make sure that trades are very critical uh, you make the trades in the right time uh, that is what is more important the average centi pawn loss of 12 is amazing i would say only one blunder as per the computer, which you can take any day. So I hope you like the video. Uh, do let me know your feedback. Keep watching and sharing. Do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already by now. And I shall see you tomorrow with some interesting and instructive content. Thanks for your time. Take care. Bye-bye.